which actually brings me to a nice analogy that I wanted to present here, a little story. Um, because I find that scientifically minded people are some of the densest, <laughs> some of the densest mind. They're so smart that they're stupid. Um, and that they forget the true nature of science. So here's my story. Uh, Galileo Galilei, in the 1600s, he built his own telescope. Now, he wasn't the first human to invent the telescope. Somebody else invented it. But he caught on to the design very early on. And he was one of the first people in Europe to build his own private little telescope. It was just a little, little thing, nothing major. But this telescope was such a radical technology that he turned it up towards the stars and he started looking at the moon in greater detail than anyone has ever looked at it. And he looked at uh, Venus and neighboring planets like Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter. He was actually able to look at the moons of Jupiter, count them, and describe them in some minor detail. Um, and then he, of course, started reporting these discoveries. But as he was reporting them, of course, the, the Spanish Inquisition and all of Europe, basically, which was very Catholic at the time. This was, I think, even pre-Protestant pre Reformation, so it was all Catholics. Um, you know, Catholicism had a hegemony and a monopoly on, on the entire thought structure of, of Europe. And you have to really appreciate the significance of this. At that time, Christianity and science, the study of reality, they were intertwined. There was no such thing as scientists in some laboratory over there and then theologians and the Pope over here and that there was a brick wall between the two. No. Universities, the first universities that were probably getting established around that time, they were all theological, based in theology, based in Christianity. So all of the main scientists of that time, and there were scientists, but most of them were actually religious folk, priests and theologians and so forth. And they were, they were interested in studying reality, but of course, only within the paradigm of Christianity. So when Galileo presented his findings of these moons and, and planets and so forth to the, to the higher ups, uh, what did they do? Did, did they embrace him and they say, oh, wow, you, you created a telescope. Wow. That's an amazing tool. Let me, let me use this thing. And, and validate your discoveries. No. <laughs> they demonized him. They looked at his results and they said, what sorcery is this? Planets, you're counting moons and planets that shouldn't even exist up there. Who are you to contradict God? It says here in our Bible that there can't be those moons out there. There's only X number of planets, X number of moons, one moon and no more and yada, yada, yada. And then when Galileo told them and remember, these were scientists. See, this is the mistake that modern scientists make when they think about this example. Of course, modern scientists understand this example. But what modern scientists and atheists and skeptics and rationalists misunderstand is that they use this example as an example of religious dogma suppressing science. No, 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 no. This is an example of science being locked in a paradigm and being unable to understand new forms of science. This is not an example of religion. This is an example of science. So the scientists of the time, who just happened to be religious, when they saw the results, they rejected the results. And when Galileo told them, hey, look, this is I'm not making this stuff up. This is not like some belief system of mine. I used a telescope to look and to see. I saw it with my own eyes. Look, come, come, guys, look at the telescope. You can see it for yourself, too. You don't need to believe me. I'm not, I'm not trying to create some sort of alternative dogma to Christianity here. I'm just reporting facts that I observed. So what did those scientists do? Did they say, oh, okay, let me look in the telescope? No, of course not. They said, what devil's instrument is that? Why should we trust this instrument of the devil to report accurate observations. And they didn't even bother to look through the telescope. 
That's a textbook example of closed-mindedness and paradigm lock. You are so locked into a paradigm and you are so closed-minded that you refuse to even open yourself up to a new modality of looking at reality that might disprove your paradigm. That is the very definition of paradigm lock. And if you don't know what paradigm lock is, I have a whole episode. I believe it's called uh, Understanding How Paradigms Work. Go search for that. You'll find it on YouTube. Mm, very important episode, what we're talking about here. So, uh, yeah, so so these folks were locked into this paradigm so much that they, they refused to even look through a telescope because their paradigm didn't recognize the validity of a telescope. Well, guess what's happening today with psychedelics? Today, psychedelics are that telescope. And today's scientists are those theologians of the past who deny to Galileo his very clear discoveries. Why? Because they were afraid to look into that telescope for themselves. Why? Because their paradigm was so limited that it didn't allow them to look through that telescope. That's exactly what's happening today with modern science. As soon as modern science begins to recognize psychedelics as a valid tool for the exploration of reality, everything in science will change. It will be a game changer bigger than Galileo, bigger than Newton, and bigger than Einstein. There are a few, a small pocket handful of scientists who are on the cutting edge exploring psychedelics right now. And they will make groundbreaking discoveries. The problem, though, is that they will be demonized and stigmatized and that most of these scientists who are doing this research, if they're in a university, they have to do it underground. They can't tell their students or their colleagues especially that they do psychedelics. Because as soon as they say that I do psychedelics to advance my science and that my science is more accurate because I do psychedelics than your science without psychedelics, as soon as you say that, you're a heretic. That's when the academic inquisition comes for you. That's when you lose your job. That's when you stop being taken seriously. Exactly. Because science is a cultural phenomenon. Science is not merely about gathering data. Science involves meta-scientific issues that are metaphysical and epistemological, which involve questions of method. The question of which methods reveal the truth? This is an open question. You don't know which methods are legitimate or illegitimate until you try them. And with psychedelics, with the psychedelic method, it's not enough to do it once or twice or even five times. Because what you're looking at is such a gigantic and profound territory that it would be equivalent to, let's say, let's say I was one of these deniers of Galileo. And finally, he convinced me to, to try the telescope. You know, he said, here, just, Leo, try the telescope. Just look in it. If you don't see it, if you don't see anything that confirms what I'm saying, then you can throw it away and you can um, continue to uh, prosecute me or persecute me. Um, but just look in it at least once. So I say, okay, fine, fine. Give me your damn telescope. I'll look through this devil's glass once. So I take it. I look through it. I look where, where do I look? I look at the wall. I don't see anything and I throw it away. And I say, ah, see, nothing. You were full of shit, Galileo. You're an idiot. See, this, isn't, this is not real science. It doesn't work this way. To truly explore and investigate something, you have to be willing to, to work at it. It's not easy to understand a new thing. You know, like if somebody like Newton invented calculus, the first people, try to imagine the first people who tried to learn calculus from Newton, that was difficult. There was no frame of reference. There was no authority that told you that calculus was true. You had to actually work through it and maybe it was wrong. You didn't know. You had to actually work through it and check it. That could have taken you years to do. Likewise, with Galileo's telescope, you had to look at the stars carefully. You had to wait till it's the right time of day uh, or night 
when there's no clouds, no rain, no obstructions, you got to find the right places in the sky to look. You got to look at them carefully with an open mind. Only then can you see what Galileo saw. So it's not a matter of just being some bumbling fool who looks through a glass and boom, the truth is revealed. It's not that simple. Likewise, it's not so simple with the psychedelic. We're just, you're some idiot at a, at a friend's house, some sort of party where people are drunk and you pop some mushrooms and you think that, oh, okay, well, Leo told me this will reveal the truth. I take some mushrooms while I'm drunk and I'm smoking weed and I'm shitting with my friends, talking shit, loud music is playing. Um, yeah, you're not going to get anything out of that. But if you carefully, methodically work through it, multiple trips, multiple substances, really introspect, contemplate, have the right intention, be mature, be serious about it. Start with slow doses, l l low doses, ramp yourself up to medium doses, then to high doses. If you explore it in that fashion, then it's a totally different ball game. Then now you're, now you're into, into real science. Now you're into the real work.